Father, we return the glory to you because you are indeed a good God. This morning, empower everyone here to succeed in all endeavors of their lives in the name of Jesus. Take away dryness. Take away mediocrity. Break the yoke of ignorance. Help everyone again by the power of your word. Today, I want to ask that everyone who dare will receive the word on good ground. Establish everyone on a platform of supernatural success. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Somebody excited tonight, let me say that. Amen. Somebody happy and well. Let me say, Lord, amen. amen. Somebody who know you are going to know with the biggest miracle. Let me shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Almighty and please may have your seat. Thank you, choir. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. We want to thank God for those wonderful testimonies. It's not, in, it's not of him that will it, not of him that run above the Lord that showed mercy. Wonderful, wonderful testimony that the Lord is doing in our midst. God reviving businesses back to life. God giving increase. Why that sister was sharing testimony. I wish sometimes we can do a little bit of background of the testimony we share so that many persons will understand that this can wholly take the hand of God. I remember one of our sisters also sharing testimony about opportunities for job uh, and how that God broke the yoke of five years of more than some years of joblessness and then come to a place of honor under 30 days. Can I stand to declare to someone here, every good thing you are looking for, you will get it today. Yeah. If your hear me, can be louder than that of your neighbor in the name of Jesus, the resurrected Lord. Every good thing you are looking for, the Lord will give you today. Yeah. If your hear me, can be louder than that of your neighbor, I declare and declare, in the name of Jesus, the resurrected Lord, in all areas of your life, you will begin to succeed. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. The Bible said, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. You shall meditate daily, day and night. Then shall that make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. And never forget that the month of June 2022 for us as a family is actually a month of good success. And I told you all at the beginning, I said, Success can be for the world, but good success is for the people that have the God advantage. As long as you are connected to the Christ, you have an advantage in you that qualifies you to enjoy success above the norm. To get married is actually success, but to have good marriage is good success. I may not agree with me. Not everybody get married and then actually have good success. If you have if you have 60 over 100, for instance, it might look as if you are successful, but somebody had 92, somebody had 99. You can call that what? Good success. But the plan of God for every child of God and everyone connected to him who had advantage of God in his boat. According to that sister, he said, every job I get, I can say there is a God factor here. One thing is key. That as long as you have God advantage, in the equation of your life, it should launch you to a reign of good success. No failure glorify God. Yeah, I'm sorry. God belongs to all. God created all. But no failure glorify God. Everyone's success is a pride of where you came out from. When you begin to reign in success in every department of your life, everybody begins to identify with you. The family where you came out from say yes, he's our sister. Yeah, you don't know him, he's my brother. 
But how many of us are proud of the failure around our life and we can be boastful of them? We can actually share love. So for them to know that at least the blood joining us is good, but nevertheless, deep within you, you are proud of everyone successful. Many of us want to be the Moses of our generation. One who can actually mentor and bring out three million people from the land of captivity to the land of Goshen where there is abundance. Took them to Kenya. You see, many of us we really want to be Moses of our time. Where you God will pass through to bring three million people from oppression to a land flowing with new canon. Many of us want to be one of the widest persons in our time so that poverty will never be associated with our lineage anymore. But let me say this. That you have God advantage does not automatically place on you success. No. No. Success, if it is God, follow principles. You are not going to obey principles. You, are, you have not qualified yourself to have good success. I deal with some of these things on Wednesday. But let me help some of us that are not here. And I pray that God will just... You can pick the tape for free. The tape from the beginning of the month. Pick that tape for free. It will do you a lot of good. Believe me. Powerful things were shared there that I might not be able to share all now because of time constraint. But from the depth of my heart, as a heart of love, as a father to every of the children in this assembly, please get those tapes for free. Sit down with them and be honest with yourself. Failure is not a thing to be proud of. When your age begins to count and there are few things not to show, you know you can join into the realm of depression. Not because that's how God ordained it. Truly, there are my forces that I may be working against you, but no force can resist principles. If it is actually principles that are gotten from scriptures. I come from a background where my back should be at the ground. But I've engaged the principle of scriptures and that ever worked. It is impossible for God to lie. The word of the truth that is in scriptures are proving and yet would guarantee results. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. And many persons quote scriptures for the fun of it just to prove that they are Christians. Many people are emotional going about to demonstrate the dogma to which they believe. But yet their life is not transformed. To be able to have, to make their way prosperous, process the world to be able to get good success. Now listen to me. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. You shall meditate therein, day and night. And to observe and to do what is written in it. He said, then shall that make thy way prosperous and you shall have good success. It's a principle. You meditate in the world. You observe to do what is written in it. Then your way becomes prosperous. And then you begin to experience good success. You know what we do in the body of Christ is that we wake up in the morning. We look for powerful prayers to pray. Bind demons. And look for all the prayer points that we can ever gather. I'm not saying prayer is bad. I'm a pastor. But there are some prayers I don't pray. There are some prayers I will never lead this church to pray. As long as I pastor this church. Because they are prayers that are born out of mediocrity. Oh God! Turn me, in the name of Jesus, to good success. Many persons have prayed those kind of prayers and they have been frustrated. An average evil man will never pray, turn me to good success. No, they will look for businesses to do and they will say, God help my business. And then it will turn out to now become successful and yet they will still give glory to God. Success does not jump on people. I gave us an instance of someone that is trying to write Wahek, for instance. If you write Wahek and then you have nine A1s, before your result ever came to you, it's already announced on newspaper. How many of you agree with me? You become the pride of your family. The father will say, I tried over you. The school fees I paid is not in vain. 
The father that has never drawn assignment for you before will even come to identify with you. He said, remember, I used to tell you ten, two times two when you're in primary two. As if these two times two you did in primary two that make you pass or head. But when you check your results, you are fee parallel. English, F9. Mass, F9. Geography, F9. No news will carry that one. Nobody wants to be identified with the failure. And when you say, oh God, bring your, David, where is your results? He said, they give me F9. Somebody that has S1 will say, I made nine A1s. Somebody that has fee parallel will say, they gave me. The problem with failure is that failure would, failure would make everybody look as if the people around you are the problem. And the people that mark you is actually the problem. When you discover his Pastor David that actually marked your paper, you will say, I, say, I, know. You say this is, I know that that man is black. He won't pass anybody. No, sir. You wrote nonsense and that's why you fail. When people succeed, they become even the pride of God. The pride of the community where they come out from. The pride of the family where they came out from. They become the pride of themselves. But nevertheless, when people fail, everybody around them becomes a suspect. Now listen to this. Nobody is your enemy in the school of success. If you truly will be successful in line with scriptural instructions, nobody can stop you. Oh, that's, this is that thing. You see, that this is that hates me is not a problem. No, no, no. A lot of persons hate me. It doesn't change anything. I'm not a perfect man and then some people can hate me. It doesn't change anything. And I'm honest. I love all people. I, en I endure as much as I can. Yeah, but a lot of things doesn't change anything. What guarantees my success is rooted in scriptures. Nobody can stop it. I told one young man sometimes ago, I said, plus or minus you, I will succeed. The young man has disconnected from me long ago. I've succeeded above that realm forever. And I will never go back to the time that God left me. Forever. Forever. This is not pride. But this is that when scripture begins to sponsor your results, when God becomes committed to the one sponsoring your results, relax. 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 You will succeed. And this is why you have to take the word of God very important. This is why you have to take your fellowship with God very important. This is why you have to be very committed listening to the someone that appears to you part time so that failure can actually go out of your life. Mediocrity is shame. Failure is shameful. The Bible recorded, they said, a wise, a wise son makes glad the heart of the father. Every son or every child that succeeds gladdens the heart of who? The one that spoiled belongs to. You know why? Because they know the mother can, does not have capacity to revolt and to fight. And that's why it's okay. Your mother will keep managing you. But I pray in the name of Jesus that every one of us will succeed. Amen. If your amen can be louder than that of your neighbor, I pray by the anointing of the Spirit of God. In every department, in your marriage, in your finances, in all areas of your life, failure will never describe you. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me say this. Hate failure. Hate it. From the depth of your heart, with the totality of your being, hate failure. Don't camp around it. Challenges will always abound. Yes, a lot of things will discourage you. The greatest asset on heart is human being. The greatest problem on heart is human being. And you need woman to succeed. No man can succeed alone. The greatest asset you can never have is who? When your hands are held up, it is human being that hold it. When your hands are tied down, human being constitutes the system that put it down. The greatest asset on heart is who? When, when you are in a relationship with somebody and then you come to pastor and you say, pastor, I'm going through hell. The question is, have you been to hell really? And the person is giving you real problem. 
Have you been to hell really? You have not been to hell. But the truth is the experience you are having with this person is actually making you to pass through what? It is human being that causes you that kind of a problem. When your finances are delayed, they're supposed to pay you money and they didn't pay you money. If somebody is sitting on it. God has placed people in systems. So when things are tired, when you go to school, is it no woman being that will teach you? When you go to hospital, is it not somebody that will attend to you? So the greatest asset on heart is woman. And the greatest problem that ever existed. And that's why we have to come from kingdom principles in managing people to take over realities of what makes us succeed. Plus or minus those who want around us. Can I just say amen to that? I, t- I, said on, I said on Wednesday, yeah, for some of us who are not here, I said, the journey to success begins with vision. If you can see it, you can get it. And then in vision, you build capacity. Because it is to you according to the capacity you can build per time. When God spoke to Abraham, he said, in Genesis 13 and 14, he said, look to the south, to the east, to the west. He said, as far as your eyes can see, he said, unto you will I give it. What was God saying there? He said, as long you can, as you can build capacity, when your capacity is bigger enough, that's the kind of result I will direct. In after the apostle chapter 20, and verse 28, or verse 32, sorry, the Bible began to teach us, he said, he said, I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among those that are sanctified. Among other things we consider on Wednesday is that when you have vision, you need to get built up, which is actually the capacity, and then you go into the land of inheritance to which that God already had for you, which is actually the land of success. But your capacity and your building per time determines the flow you will enjoy. Are we together? But that's not my sermon this morning. I just did a, bit, a little bit of recap. But I'm going to be talking to you about four D's in the school of success according to scriptures. Number one is determination. Determine to succeed. Everybody has 24 hours to him or herself. Now there's this popular saying now that flows around now. You say, last last everybody will eat breakfast. But what you eat will be different. Some people eat breakfast with chicken. Some people eat breakfast in the gutter. But truthfully speaking, it's breakfast they had. But the quality of what they had is different. Nobody succeeds by accident. Determination is key if you will succeed. What you determine to achieve is important. One of the things I can give example in my life is that I've determined no matter whatever happened, I will serve God. I've gone through hell. Maybe because I'm immature in things. Maybe because some people know more than I do. But demons and all manner, all things has fought us, but I've never given up. In the school of success, if you really, life will never present to you opportunities that will not come with challenges. Believe this. There will be no short a time. Somebody say, hey, my job is not too hard. You see, I'm just a beautician. <sighs> I've come around those people before. Even I have somebody in the UK who tells you that kind of a job. I, I, I think she might be watching online right now. She, she, she related with me how her friends left her when she started making some dimension of progress. And I said, don't worry. Just be committed and keep pushing. Success can weary you. Because one thing about, now one thing about success is that success comes with a body. And can put you to a corner in loneliness. Now look at me. If being the privileged pastor of this assembly, if I said our pulpit should be shifted away from here and be turned to the back there, an average member of the people who are close to us, who are part of the decision making, the very first thing I know, one of them will say is, Pastor, 
Yes, I agree with you. We can move this thing from here and move it to the back. It's possible. Very easy. But the very first thing they will tell you is, how ah, about the money? I'm happy, bro. Larry is here. But we started this project and then, how many we were in church? The people, the number of the people that were in church that time we were five. How many? And out of that five, you count me, you count my wife, you count but Larry, uh, Okene and the children. You remember? And then, we want to do project of millions that even our church offering, as at that time, putting all our church offering together in a month is less than 20,000. I wanted to embark on the projects that the very first money we calculated was $10,000. I said, I will not, you know, for a long time I've stopped calculating my own money in Naira so that I won't be confused. So when I look at that, if you, if you actually convert that money that time, it's not really a big money because Naira was still fair to dollar. I said, okay. We need to do this so that we put all of this together. God helping us. In sincerity, but Larry look around. A lot of person look around. Okay, then look around and shake it for me. <laughs> uh, they wonder how this will ever happen. One day we sat on the floor right there. But Larry was committed enough to speak. He said, Pastor, you know I will tell you the truth. I said, I know. You will always say so. And when he stated that all that he said is the truth, I said, you are correct. And I told her, I said, that is fat, but that is not truth. He said, we are exactly, he said, we need money. We cannot, we cannot in any way say we don't need money. And I said, don't worry. The moment you are determined to succeed, One thing that will happen is this. That's when the devil will rise up against you. Because the devil wants you as a failure. Let's check Genesis chapter 11. Determined to succeed. I can read from verse 5 and 6 because of time. There were some people who actually decided to build a tower that would reach God. And they put themselves together and they become of one language and of unity was among them and they began to build. When they already had that mind determined to do it, the Bible recorded that God came down to check what they were determined to do. And God saw that if they started building truly, they will build from here and they will build to heaven. Because they are determined to what? To do it. Many of us know that story. The Tower of Babel. Even God in heaven, their determination could shake the attention of God in heaven for God to come down and come and check. He said, you guys are determined. And look at what God said about them. Look at verse 5. He said, but the Lord came down to see the city. And the tower which the son of man had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, these people are one, and they have one language, and this is what they are beginning to do. And now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from these people already determined that they will build a tower that will reach God. God has to come down and say, These people are one. These people are so determined. And this thing they have proposed to do, nobody will stop them. This will not even, even God does not stop your determination. Even God. Determination is powerful. Now, listen to an average failure. Most of them determined to fail. Believe me. My father operated a little clinic before he died. There's this experience we used to have in that clinic. When people that are properly married, when they, when they actually give birth, like a husband and a wife, when the wife put to bed in the, in, in the clinic, you see how the man will come in. Maybe they even called the man. The man might actually be at work. It was in the day of night where you press number. 
The wife has given back to you. You understand what I'm saying? Maybe the husband has gone to work or something. They now call. They say, yeah. Your wife has given back. Oh, the, man, the man will say, Hey, ha, thank God. Thank God. Don't lose They will say all manner of reactions. But if it is a girl, maybe around 14, that just got pregnant out of nonsense. When the girl gives birth, and they, I don't know why my father used to do those nonsense those days, and request for the person. Like the husband or the the father of the baby or so. Okay, maybe to sign birth certificate, yes. Because there's this government birth certificate that was with him that time and then you need to step and rest. If it is actually a fourteen year old girl or a little girl that just got pregnant and then and the person who impregnated the person is not responsible, it's not something you can write to me about. When the, when they say who impregnated the girl, you will see like five people. You see like five young men they will stand up. My father will say, which among you? They say, it's us. It's us. <laughs> but when I gave out to my own baby, they asked me, who gave us? I said, I'm the father. You'll be proud to be a what? A father. But the one who did it anyhow will never be proud of it. So when he wants to show up, he will go with like four or five friends. Who impregnated? They can say, it's us. It's us. And you will see that the one that you really impregnated will not be the one talking. Is the friend that will step out. They say, are you the one? Would you come and sign the best? I say, no, it's not me that will sign. You say, you will sign. As if they are delegating responsibility. And when you listen to stories like that, they make excuses not for them to be determined to be successful. And that's why they face some shame. And they could not even defend the consequences of it. Nobody really can defend the consequences of failure. Nobody. And this is why every one of us should be determined. Your business must succeed. I know it. We know it doesn't matter the challenges I face. This church will be successful. It's, I've been saying it for long. Money will never be my problem. I've been saying it for long. I've been saying it for long. I'm happy that is here. If I'm lying, ask him. I've been saying, he said, money it doesn't matter who disconnected from me, whoever, it will never, never will be successful. And God will be proud of me. I've been saying it. In the days when we're in Duse, when you look as if the place where we're is just an ordinary PVC, I wasn't talking like one. My mentality does not conform. I wasn't a mediocre. I came up one day, I told Lord, I said, I can never be a local champion. No, no. Now, you see, when you begin to talk like this, a lot of persons will see you as you are proud. And check their life, their failures. When you are successful, you still help them. How come people did not really... This is one thing I hate about Africa. The moment you begin to confess positively and walk towards and working on yourself, a lot of persons will take offenses. He says, it's too proud. One day I came to church and I told all of them, I said, the time is coming. I won't come to this church by leg. I said, a time will come. There will be flying on the air like this. At that time, I'll be around... Nay, I say all the elders of the church will be following me around, will be preaching the gospel. Around. I say it's not going to be in Nigeria. We will fly our own plane. <laughs> There's a woman in church, she was around 60 that time, he walked with uh, one of these ministries and called me. He said, he said You. Uh, and truthfully speaking, that, that time I wasn't married. Truthfully speaking, I was very hungry that day. And the woman looked at me and said, Even the food you eat, you don't have. Is this all this one you are saying? No, no. I'm determined to succeed. When you are truly determined, these people did not determine in line with the will of God. They determined against the will of God. Even God said, I can't stop them. How much more? We that we actually have determination in line with what? With the will of God. Sir, please, eight failure. Ma, I beg you in the name of God, hate failure. And be determined to succeed. Out of that determination, my marriage will be successful. I said it to myself. My wife is not the first person I met. I've done one introduction before that look as if it's a local, uh, local traditional wedding. But what I want, I know what I want. I remove. I've met about two ladies before I ever met my wife. The two numbers. One of them, we even did introduction that was so elaborate. But one thing was not just led to one thing. I said, no, it won't be. 
if this is not this is not this is not what i saw the success to which i've trusted god for this is not it and to the glory of god god remove me you know one thing is when you are determined i have about three more to go and i'm checking time now one thing that is good about determination is even if god cannot stop you is it the devil that will stop you You have the advantage of God already. When you are actually determined in line with his will. I want to be successful not because I want to be oppressive. One day I told myself, I said, God can give me the whole of Duse. And I will build houses there and I will give people free. I will name it a particular city. I said, every widow that is connected to me, they will have a scheme and they will free hospital, they will be free this. I said, the whole of Duse. Somebody look at me and say, you are crazy. I don't want that success to succeed to make pride. No. I want that success so that I can rescue from people away from their pain and trouble. Because I was close to some people's pain at that time. I said, if God will give me this whole city, I will, the whole of Duse, I will build a massive house there and I will put people in this system and they will live in for free. Can I say this? I'm determined to succeed. Be determined. Let me tell you one thing about determination before I move to another. That you are determined to succeed will not actually excuse you from challenges. That you are also determined to fail will still not excuse you from challenges. If you have made up your mind that anything goes, that's already a failure. Don't worry, there will still be challenges. That you are determined to succeed will not excuse you from challenges. That you are determined to fail will still not excuse you from challenges. So it's good to be on the path of that which is right. That no matter what happens to you, you are guaranteed that your hand is good. Whatever thing that you are passing through right now, just know it's a face. I told myself one time, it is in a bit of trusting God to succeed. I told myself, I said, God cannot mismanage the life of those who trust him. What I'm passing through now is not it. No, no. It doesn't matter what is fighting me now. No. I wish some of you are close to a bit of my story. Ah, you will cry for me. One day I gathered a few of the guys around us in church and I began to speak to them about some few things. I said, has any of you passed through this kind of system before? They could not talk. I'm not old yet. I'm still a young man. But I've seen things a little. Behind talking like this is a depth of sacrifice with a lot of scars. The one thing has helped me to keep me going. I'm determined. It doesn't matter what happened. I am determined to succeed. Determination is key in the school of success. Are we together? Number two. Number two is dedication. Are we together? One good thing about Christian is that we are close to good messages. But not everybody is dedicated to it. Can I say this again? An average Christian is close to good messages. An average Christian is close to good advice. Many of us came out from a very good home that they propel us to have determination to succeed and we hate failure. That I, I can begin to quote some few families here that in that family I know them. They were properly trained. Trained to the point that they hate failure. But not everybody is dedicated and committed to succeed. Dedication is ability to be focused, commitly focused to get to the end. Determination is not enough. Dedication makes it work. I passed the night in church last night. I've been awake as early as I don't want to bother you the time. But I've been awake more than four or five hours now. Now that's not determination, that's dedication. Dedication will make you to be committed to the determination to which you are proposed. 
Somebody said, I've determined to succeed in my exam. Dedication will teach you to sit down for three hours every day to read. So I'm dedicated to the course that will make me to be successful. Dedication is simply means staying committed to the course that will make you what? Successful. I'm dedicated to my marriage and that's why I will love any other, I will never love any other woman. That's not determination. That's dedication. Are we together? Somebody say I'm dedicated to actually succeed in my academics. You are ready, you are, you are committed by registering. You are committed by trying to go to school. But you become dedicated when you go to lectures. You become dedicated when you write assignments and tests. You become dedicated. You are not part of those people in the time of lecture. That's when they go around, they go to parties and all of that. Am I together? Are we together? Dedication is actually a process that makes you stay committed to the things you need to do so that you can have success. A dedicated businessman will not open shop at 10 o'clock every day. They say, Gawa, are you not in shop today? They say, say, this week I won't rest. I'm the owner of the business. He has determination to succeed, but he's not committed, not dedicated to seek success. Not every worker is dedicated. Yeah, and this one, this one painful thing in the body. Not everybody in the place where they are found are dedicated. One thing is a lot of persons has used us and has divided our trust that every other thing that comes our way we want to manage it in worldly wisdom. You say, I don't want to be too committed to anybody. And that's why many people don't have good relationship. Because of the lack of who to trust. Because of past experiences has killed our dedication and is affecting an aspect of our life that is turning things negatively against us. Being determined is not enough. Being committed to the process that will take you there is dedication. There is always a process that will make you pass through what you have determined. You staying faithful to it to the end is what? Nobody ever succeed. These are scriptural principles. No, but now the story we read, those people were dedicated to the cause. They were putting bricks together already. They were ready to build. I believe that they're already planning night and day. People that will do night shift, morning shift, because it's impossible for all of them to just be working at the same time. But they were dedicated to the cause because all of them were, God spoke about them that these people already have purpose, they have one language, they have one spirit, they actually put their mind together and God said, this week they are proposed to do, nobody can stop them. Until God has to confuse their language. If God did not look for a system to stop them, they would have built the tower. So in case you are tired, instead of committing suicide, you just fly to where the tower of Babel is. You just begin to climb. You know you are going to heaven already. Nah, that was what they wanted. In case you are tired, maybe the the government do something you don't like and you are decided you say don't worry you know what? I will save and when I save I know where I'm going you just fly to anywhere the tower of Babel is you enter there okay you just be following the step you know you are already directly going to God but God had to look for a system to stop that they were determined they were dedicated they actually wanted to see the things they are supposed to do so don't be determined to succeed in area of your life alone. Be dedicated to the cause. Dedication will wake you up the time you are supposed to wake up. I was telling one of our guys this morning, I said, if alarm that you set on your phone is not waking you up, you are far from a level of success. Yeah. Yeah. It means you are not dedicated to the things you have determined to do. Many of us set alarm, I'm going to wake up 1 a.m. When is 1 a.m.? I'm just pressing the time. 110, there's some alarm that after 10, 10 minutes to remind you. When it will remind you, you press again. And that 5 minutes, it will remind you, you press again. Why? Simply because you are not dedicated to the cause to which you have determined to achieve. Dedication will keep you awake. Ah, it's not every time I wake up, I'm happy. Sometimes I wonder, say, ah, the time has reached again. Sometimes I used to pray that God would take Sunday forward a little. Honestly, believe me. That when I wake up on Sunday morning, I say, oh God, can you, is it possible for you to change the day? Shift it to Friday, to Friday so that I can have enough time to be here for Sunday. I used to say it. 
But because of dedication, he has to still follow through the process that will deliver it. So, success comes with what? Determination. Comes with what? How many of us are following? Uh, success comes with what? And what? Number three is discipline. This is what we don't like. Ah, this is what an average person because discipline it simply means denying yourself. Number three is what? Let me say this. If you are not disciplined, you will never go far. One beauty of discipline I want to arrange. Discipline simply means putting yourself under some set of rules to obey. You know I don't eat church money. I am disciplined. Don't think it doesn't come to my table once in a while. There are things we propose to do before that the money will come out. And then they will have signed the money. After signing the money, there will still be change. If I eat the change, they will not know. How many of you agree with me? I have little, I have friends around. Now, if I'm friending one girl, eh? and I drive to their pick the girl, and I go and visit my friend, and I tell my friend that it's my sister in the Lord, the friend might leave us for us, you will not know what happened. But I'll be disciplined enough not to descend that law. It is discipline that actually qualify you to succeed. A lot of persons are determined. A lot of persons are what? Are dedicated. But not everybody. Now this is one problem with Africa. I was speaking to a doctor at the course of the week. The doctor happens to be in the UK. And this particular doctor, some few months back, I don't want to mention, maybe many months back, I said, I said opportunities, I told the doctor, I said, opportunities are going to come for you. But you will not have money to trade. I said, start saving now. I said, I'm seeing bigger opportunities coming for you. And you are going to need money to trade. I said, start what? I said, I'm not telling you give me money. And I'm not saying save the money with me. Create a system to which you can keep. He said, okay, sir. I will. So something led to one thing and then at the cost of maybe some few weeks back, they have to do one ceremony. And then when they had to do that ceremony, he was talking to me last week, he said, he said, the savings, you pull out the savings so that they can do the ceremony. Ah. I said, excuse me, sir. I said, this is wrong. I said, what will be the beauty of the ceremony? People will come they will eat, they will dance, and they will go back home. They will never know it's actually the service of somebody that's supposed to bring a better opportunity is what somebody is eating. Discipline will actually make you to save and start by the rules to which you save. No matter what happens. Now, savings, now I, don't, I don't want to talk about this anyway, but savings to every child of God or to everyone who understands financial system we use savings for capital projects or emergency in the case of health. No ceremony. If you, if you have ever studied financial progression before, how you can be successful when it comes to finances. Now, one of the success is to give and the rest of that God will bless you. Yes, uh, that's half truth. There are a lot of real truth that comes with financial progression. You must learn how to invest. You must learn how to save. You must learn how to keep money for when opportunities will come. When, oppor when preparation meets with opportunity, it is called success. You really need to prepare for the days to which opportunity will come. A day will come, they will say, they are investing to real estate. They want people who can buy their blockchain for maybe 300000 
and you remember that the money you used on do birthday two months ago is over 300,000 and you are proud of yourself that you did birthday for 300,000 and yet opportunities that will actually change your story you could not actually bring out 300,000 how shameful it is are we together many of us can sit down to eat pizza of 9,000 just in the name of a feeling to snap and then you wake up in the morning and say, you see, I'm one of the big girls. What are you doing to look like them? Because you eat pizza. And when opportunity comes that's supposed to change your story for life, you do not have money to trade. It means you are not disciplined. It is discipline that will train you not to borrow. Nah. Ask anybody around me. I don't, I don't borrow. Yeah, if I say give me 10,000, it means maybe I have dollars, I don't have naira. Yeah. And I don't have means to actually change at that time to go out. Discipline will actually fuel your determination and your dedication to succeed. Discipline is putting yourself under set rules. Now, understand your level per time. There are things you will bring to me in this church that I will never do. A lot. A lot of persons ask. Now, I, I, I used to get plenty of invitations to preach. But I don't go out to preach. Among God, as I used to tell them, I say I want to sit down and trust God to give this work a shape before I begin to travel. I'm happy Larry is here. Larry has helped me to read an invitation from you because there are some language they were putting there I did not understand. So I called him to come and help me and check. I was invited in the U.S. to come and stay two, two weeks and have some preaching engagement. Mm. This evening will tell you not to go. There are plenty of people in the U.S. who actually go in the name of opportunity that they are washing the table now. Am I sensible here? Not all open doors are open ever. There is a way that smells right onto a man. The hand thereof is a part of what? If you are not putting yourself under some set rules, for example, it takes discipline for me not to slap my wife. Yeah. An average lady has some few things they say to get you angry. As a matter of fact, a woman has a way of making you feel reduced sometimes. Like, in the name of their playing with you. Uh, is it not this thing I said? Is it too much that I said it? Am I saying? Am I saying something? Thank you. But discipline that you have set rules that these boundaries you will not, you will not cross. If you are not disciplined, people, you will never be successful. Successful people are disciplined people. Consider the case of Jesus. Jesus said, "He said, I must walk the walk." Of the father, why is day? For when night comes, no one can walk. Meaning, I am disciplined enough, it doesn't matter what happened to me, to fulfill the course that was actually set ahead of me. You know that Jesus was determined to succeed. Jesus was committed and dedicated to succeed in his mission. But he said, among other, I must walk the walk of him who sent me. Why is day? A night cometh where no one can walk. You know the meaning of the night? Let me say this. If you are not going to do what you are supposed to do now, a time is coming where you are going to be irrelevant. Now, listen to me. Nobody, how many of you have businesses and you are looking for somebody to employ and you employ somebody that is 70 years old? That's already night. How many of you want to employ, you have businesses and you want to employ people and the persons you want to employ are actually people that are already 100 years old. He said, the woman is suffering. I want to help. Let her be the one to come and wash my clothes and my children's clothes so that I'll be paid. You. How many of you will do that? It's already night for such people. So if you are not going to be disciplined enough to work the work you are supposed to work right now, night is coming where you will not be able to work. When somebody who is 20, from 20 to 40, you are sleeping 8 hours in 24 hours. I'm sorry, you are already spending your night. It is discipline. That make you cultivate habit and attitude. Culture that will propel you to where you are going. Discipline is a very hard thing. It's a very hard thing. It takes discipline to consistently pay tight. 
Yeah. yeah I, I preached in Titan before that a lot of persons get angry at me. Ah, the thought is because I need the money. And I'm honest. If you are not a Titan in this church, we will not need it. I'm sorry, it's true. We do project before we ever see it. When we did this ceiling, God helped us to put 680 together. This young man was with me. I was collecting the money. I was giving it to him. When we finished this ceiling, I stood here on this. I stood here. It was here I was standing. I said, glory to God. Everybody was happy that they came to church. Things has changed. And the Lord said, tell these people they will be broke. If they don't do what you did. One night I did not leave church account among that 680. God passed through that. God passed through us to bring that, that 680 from our own little account to fix it. But since that time, with that kind of evolve, will ever be a prayer point again? No, sir. And that was the very first time I ever did something like that. So now, understand what I'm trying to say. I've been disciplined enough never for anybody to not be a, a source to which you say this is where you make from. No. There's no house in this, there's nobody in this house in this church today that if I come to your house, it's not because uh, they say pastor has come again. No. No. I'm a blessing. I said, ah, that's why I came yesterday. They said the children cannot carry anything to school. We have to run around to look for 2,000 for pastor. No, sir. No, sir. But there are days that I look as if things were like that. But I'm disciplined enough never to communicate that. Because I read. I've never seen where Jesus stood up one morning and said, Peter, oh boy, you get 2,000 there. He said, come, come, come. Uh, which one is that? John, Alpha. 5,000 there, you answer. I've never read in scriptures. Ministry should not place burden on the people that God helped you to pastor. I've never stood on this pulpit one day and said, I want to raise money. 5,000 come out. If you don't give now, you will die. How many of you have seen me do that? For what? I'm looking for what to give, not what to take. Sir, it takes discipline. Don't think it's all roses for me to do that. It takes a lot of discipline to be able to do that. Take a lot of discipline. Never to be a body nor a consign to no one. It takes a lot of discipline. There are days I'm hungry, nothing from anywhere, and the rest of that, and I just lie down. With the, with the mindset, my redeemer leave it. I know you will come true. One thing will lead to one thing, and something will happen. It takes discipline. Let me say this: it takes discipline to actually be able to enjoy your faith in the Christ. It is discipline that will never make you to consider alternative. Do you agree with me? There are many ways that leads to the market. If you know, do say first gate market. There are many roads that lead to that market. But discipline will keep you on the lane to which God has put you. You say, no, there's shortcut. If I pass power line, just God said, no, this is not the road. Follow through Amir State. Don't even branch Amir State. Turn from here. You go to day day first. Cross that road. Now follow the main road. You say, God, this is too far. But discipline will keep you. As I'm committed, I'm dedicated, and I'm disciplined to follow. Keep myself under this rule until I get to where God asked me to go. Discipline is key if you'll be successful. Can I hear say amen? amen? Number four, and which is the last one because of time, is diligence. Is what? Determination, dedication, discipline, and what? I wish there's time. I really want to talk about this way. The Bible says, yes, a man that is diligent in his business, he shall stand before well. He shall not stand before. If any business that you are doing is only local people that are patronizing you, you are not diligent. Kamoski Bahanta. Felakoski Bruhota. Kamalita Hatika. If you are a dry cleaner, you are not ironing for people that are already king. You will be claiming local champion. Are we together? But you are not there yet. The Bible says, See as a man that is diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. And not what? And not me, man. Can I tell you this, people? Diligence will make you to serve your meal with royalty. I gave one example sometimes ago. There's a place I used to go and bab before. When I entered the place, one of the guys that would come and bab me, he has enjoyed some 
How did they call it? How did they call it? Go. Uh, marijuana. And they are taking uh, the one they used to take in the morning. And most times I used to go and bab early in the morning. Most times it's always in there. Now, we are smoke all manner and then the guy is dead. Those guys are very good. If they bab you, you enjoy it. But the way they are going about it, they are not diligent. Nobody that is responsible that something meaningful doing we want to identify with them that these are my babas. You see they are dressing the kind of song they play. The place is noisy. If you are in that place, only the noise alone is enough to block your ears. And when I enter there, I have to beg them, can you please turn down? Now, anytime I go there, I don't like as if my own is too much. I'm trying to go against the kind of system to which they operate in that place. It look as if my own was much, but it wasn't so. I have a lot of things that I'm thinking. Now, what I'm using my money to get should not be the problem to me. So I have to advise myself. You need to change location. So I tried one guy one day, man. When I entered the place, the guy was playing some kind of song and they were all worship. And the noise was not much. Very solo. And the guy was very fast. The guy did it perfectly well. The second time I was going, I told Shadrach to follow me to come and go and see. That guy is not only determined. That guy is diligent. Diligent will make you to present your best always. If you really want to be successful, it is your best you can trade with. It is in the palace they reward people. Every other person can bring you little money. But when king buy from you once, can shoot your business to, to what you cannot get in the next 10 years. Somebody that is sewing the clothes for the president of this nation is not like the other tailor of the road. I'm not afraid to agree with me. That guy is not a tailor because he has connection. Now, this is always a problem of Nigeria. That guy becomes the tailor of the president because that guy knows something that other person did not know. You see the clothes of the president, smart at all times, good at this, always perfect in that, always looking smart. Somebody is doing it. Why will order not qualify? will order not qualify to be able to do it? They are not diligent enough. See as a man that is diligent in his business, giving whatever you are doing from the best and of the best, seeking information to always remain the best, qualifies you to be diligent. You are determined. You are dedicated. You are disciplined. But yet, be diligent. Don't do things anyhow. It is diligence that will say five minutes you are leading open prayer. Every, everybody is already used to it. Now, even some persons who want to come late to church, you have calculated. They say 8 to 8.05 is open prayer. 8.05 to 8.20 is, uh, is praise and worship. 8.20 to like 8.30 you'll be the prayers. Okay, they might take the prophetic declaration in this way. That's diligence. And they stick to time, they do that. They serve what we need to give you in honor. Now, when I want to prepare for message, I don't prepare for messages as if I want to talk to the people in church. I've been saying it for long. There was one, there was a particular time we were still in Duse then. All of us that were in church were less than 10 or 12. And I sat 11 p.m. in the night. 11 in the evening. I sat 11 p.m. in the night and I started reading. I read a whole book from that time to 5 a.m. After I finished reading that book, I was so oh, oh, I got a few things I needed to get, and then I went home. I helped my family to do some things with shower, and then we came to church. And I came to church that morning, and then I began to I began to teach. And I told them in church, I said, I said I had a wonderful time last night. I was able to read from that time to this time. I said, I don't think I'm preparing for the people that are coming to church. No, no, I'm not preparing for that number. I'm preparing for a capacity that is big. Diligence will show in your preparation for any delivery. Are we together? Somebody said they only give me five minutes to sing. And out of the five minutes they want to use, okay, oh, you sing in church for five minutes. The person already had an all night vigil to pray and listen to all manners of song to prepare. And just five minutes to come to manifest. They say, wow, that guy is different. 
No, that guy is diligent. Behind every act of, behind every act that you can qualify that is excellent is a lot of hard work. And it is called what? I don't preach as if I'm preaching to the persons who are coming to listen to me. No, sir. I'm diligent enough to be able to study hard that there's nobody in this entire world that will listen to what I'm saying and will say, this boy is saying nonsense. I preached a sermon here about marriage sometimes back in our marriage class. I stood there after saying the sermon and then we had a good time and a lot of us went home. We posted that on YouTube and then something led to one thing. Somebody came across that message on Friday. I preached that message on uh, Sunday and on Friday somebody came across that message. She listened to it and she said, and she wrote me and said, I just listened to what you said. This is right. He said, can I send you a love offering? That offering was in dollars. Now, if I've actually prepared my mind to come say, so, uh, I know them now. Uh, is it not sister uh, that will come? Uh, brother, this one will be there. No? I don't need to worry myself. I just come and say to marriage is marriage. Is this one is that. This one. I just say, yeah, I, and then I will be able to size their mentality. Is that so? But no, I don't do that. I personally listen to the messages, to the product I give out myself. That if I sit down to listen, am I saying something reasonable? And I have it in mind that I will never be local to the point that what I say here will lose relevance with time. No. I sit down to gather a lot of information and I go deeper to when I act. There are messages I preach five years back that I still listen to them till now. That is diligence. That is what? And is born from hard work. Whatever job or whatever business you find yourself and you are trusting God to be successful, let me tell you this. Be determined to succeed. Be dedicated to the course that will make you succeed. Be disciplined to follow the rules that will make you succeed. And be diligent in preserving, in, in actually presenting it to others. Then you will succeed. Never forget that good success and to make your way prosperous, follow a lot of principles. He said, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. You shall meditate therein, day and night. And you observe to do all that is written therein. He said, then would you make your way prosperous. And you shall have what? You cannot have good success by wishing. It is following principle. Be determined. Be dedicated. Be disciplined. And serve whatever you have. With what? With diligence. One few, I made one illustration, and let me say this, and I will close. How many of us, how many of us have sell food here before? Let me see. Hand. Maybe your mom sell food. Raise up your hand away. Let me see. Don't be ashamed. All right, mommy, thank you. Ah, sell food before. All right, thank you. Thank you. Ah, we have good numbers. I know many of us asked to cook. I have eaten a lady's food before. Wonderful cooking. Oh, wonderful. But no matter how good that food is, for instance, Besides the food, you see, they just put a uh, little poopoo just beside. Very good food. You just see little poopoo of a chair. How many of you still eat that food? That food is good. But that poopoo has spoiled. The what? You know the truth? Many of us are determined to succeed. Many of us are dedicated and disciplined. But we don't serve our me with diligence. Just one little thing by not doing it right take us away from our success be diligent anywhere you find yourself whatever that God ever brought your way be diligent satisfy conscience they might use you now this is the problem they might use you where you are that you want to be successful, maybe the place where you are, you are determined to succeed, you have all of the zeal, you are dedicated, committed, and then you are diligent. And somebody is using you, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. People who use you, they make you better. Believe me. Believe me. For some of us who agree under the pain that look as if they punish us more, they beat us more, we are better today. There are many more. I can begin to quote if they will allow me to say some things. I know a family here that they told me how their father used to beat them when they were young. That value is still in them. Today. They don't stay outside till eight, nine. You won't see them outside. And they are here, daddy. There are some of them that are 40. You will never see them outside. And they are here, daddy. That culture is still in them. It's still in them. You know. 
How many of you want to succeed? How many of you truly, truly want to succeed? Glory to God. I pray. Failure will never be identified with you in every department of your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. If I say name, let your hymn be loud and clear. You will never, never know failure anymore. In Jesus' mighty name. Alright, we're going to our communion today very fast. Now let me say this. One thing I know about the communion is that it empowers people. There is something about the anointing. The anointing is given direction by your understanding. Can I say this again? It is the direction you want the anointing to go that it will go. Look at this. Somebody say, I am anointed as a healing minister. Somebody say, I'm anointed as a teacher. It's the same anointing that rests upon them, but the direction to which the anointing manifests is different. Are we together? It is our understanding part time that give direction to the anointing. It is he that gives the power to get wealth. There is a the anointing that actually brings upon people that make them to get wealth. He is the same anointing that also heals. But you know one thing about the healing anointing? It is your understanding that interprets it to people. The anointing that delivers, it is your understanding that interprets it to people. So whatever your understanding is, is what you give. That's the direction you are giving anointing to work. The Bible said my people are destroyed for lack of so what you don't know, you can't carry the anointing in that regard. Believe me. Believe me. So the body and the flesh of Christ will communicate to you the understanding you have for time. And let me help you understand it. Trust God that as you take the communion today, the Lord will take away every seed of failure. Amen. Away from you. Maybe my father was a failure. And summer is becoming my own experience. Maybe there is a mystery behind the consistent failure that you have seen. The body and the flesh of Christ communicate the life of Christ and can dissolve every mystery. Can dissolve. And there be foundational power that has value will never be successful. There is a mystery on the table that communicates to people. You do, and the Bible says if you eat, if you eat, my flesh and you drink my blood. He said you have a part in me. He said do this in remembrance of me. You can carry in you renewing the flesh, eating the flesh and the blood and drinking the blood of Jesus. Carrying the life of Christ in you and the yoke of failure will ever succeed around you. But what you understand give direction. To what the anointing will communicate. Can I say this? The communion will communicate to us today that the yoke of failure in our life will be broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. The failure of our parents will not become our experience. Amen. The failure of the people ahead of us will not become our own experience. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And every mystery that is responsible for every form of failure in our life shall be broken in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what the Lord will do. This is what he will do. I beg you in the name of God, nobody can succeed for you. Believe me. Honestly believe what I'm about to say. And if you are a failure, you are not even the pride of yourself. If you are consistently failing, you are not a pride of yourself. How many of you have F9 that you can show it? You say, praise the Lord, God is good. I just want to share the testimony. I wrote to a class here and I have F9 in all my soldiers. How many people share that kind of testimony? So no failure will be celebrated. How many people beat their wife and they can come out and say, <laughs> and she see me like this. She knows when I come. Five in the morning, eight in the afternoon. That's what I do. I'm a strong. No, nobody share that kind of testimony. Never camp around failure. Never. All of us that are parents here, train your children to succeed. Be successful yourself so that you train your children to succeed. You know one thing about success? Where you stop is where your children will continue. Where you stop is where your children will continue. So if you have a failure today, you are failing for a generation. Yes! 
you are handing over the battle of failure to your children. They are proud of it. To the ability and to the to the ability and to the grace that God will make available to me, I vowed I will never be a failure. I won't hand over nonsense to this generation. I've redefined a lot of things that my parents left. A lot. A lot. I've been, I've been in this thing for a while. No, country is big to show. No, sir. Popularity does not make that somebody is successful. That's what you don't know. There are many people that are popular. Look, I see they are successful today. Check and check their track record. Many of them are successful because of the labor of their parents. Somebody looked at me one day and said, anytime this person called me in the middle of the night, sometimes 1 a.m., sometimes 5 a.m., if I peek like this, I say, hello? He said, he said excuse me, see that you don't sleep? I said, I sleep. He said, but there's no day I've ever called you that the phone will ring like twice. And at the same time, your voice will be sharp. He said, no wonder pastors in Nigeria are successful. And he said, would you come to the country I am? He said, if you continue, if you, the kind of labor you put in where you are, if you are in this particular country I am, you love God. I said, no, I still am. Eight failure. Don't be saying it's your destiny. It's not your destiny. No, don't stop doing. Let, let, let no devil lie to you. you know, say, my mother tried. My mother too tried. The thing did not work. It's a lie. It's a lie. You can be better than your parents. You can be better. Little bit right I'm not a failure. Rise to your feet, everyone. Say, I'm not a failure. If you are not saying it, I know you are not. You are not in the spirit. Say, I'm not a failure. I will never fail. The failure of my parents will not be my own experience. My children have succeeded far ahead of me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Can you pray one minute, somebody? Kabara Kosu Kabariata. Can you pray one minute? Shakota Lidakita. Karuski can be and take her. Can you pray one minute? Shakati Yaba. I will never know failure anymore. The last failure I saw shall be the